So I often get asked the question like, hey Josh, like I know you do the whole YouTube thing and you seem to be pretty good with the camera, like do you do photography too? And I've, I've never really known how to answer that question. You're like yes, yes I make videos, yes I'm decent with the camera and yes I like to take pictures, but like, I don't know, I never really considered myself or could call myself a photographer. I'm really not sure what qualifies somebody as a photographer though. Like yes, I love to take pictures and unlike most people, I actually know how to use a camera. I'm not just one of those people that owns a DSLR and uh, takes pictures occasionally and has never switched their camera off auto. Like, I I know how to I know how to set up the settings on my camera to get the correct exposure, like aperture, ISO, shutter speed, all that stuff. Like, I know that pretty well because I experienced with it with the video stuff. But I always kind of hated calling myself a photographer because there were so many different people out there that were doing it way better than I was. And to call myself a photographer, I felt like I just didn't have enough experience. I felt like I just wasn't good enough at the craft to actually you know, deserve that label. Because the whole reason I got super good at uh, using cameras in the first place was with YouTube. So before the summer started, I kind of had this, had this like subconscious goal for myself. I knew I was going to be spending two months in Eastern Africa, traveling through Tanzania and Kenya and learning Swahili. And in addition to that, obviously seeing these beautiful landscapes, these beautiful animals and like having once in a lifetime experiences. So I thought, why not try to use this opportunity in Africa to kind of up my photo game? use it as like an experimental learning period to take a ton of pictures and see what happens. But like after the whole experience of last summer in Paris and uh, getting my gear stolen, I was a little hesitant, especially when it came to, you know, lugging $4,000 of equipment halfway across the globe. But I, I eventually decided that I would, but I decided I would pack lighter, okay? So I, I wasn't bringing my vlog camera, I wasn't bringing any extra supplies, I was gonna bring my one DSLR, my Canon 80D, that I'm filming on right now, and then my favorite lens, which is the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter f1.8, which I'm also filming on right now. Um, that, that was all I was gonna bring, and like the, obviously like the charging cables and all that stuff that I needed. But I was gonna pack light, that was what I was gonna bring. I was really gonna focus on taking as many pictures as possible and seeing what happens. Like I've, I've obviously done a ton of photo shoots with friends in the past. Um, I love just like getting together with some friends, taking some cool photos and everything. And like I've, I'm decent with the camera, but I wanted to kind of take that next step. I wanted to get as much practice as I could and really develop the craft because it's something that I'm very interested in, but I just haven't had enough time to actually pour into it and dedicate to it. Now I titled this video, How I Learned Photography, but really in reality, it's more of like how I developed my own style in photography over the past couple months, over the summer, where I was pretty much just shooting every day. Like obviously I was still taking videos, but like I didn't bring my vlog camera because I, I didn't want any more gear there that like could be stolen. So I was filming a ton on my phone. I was filming a little bit on this camera. It's a little heavier and hard to carry around and everything. But I kind of like shifted my focus a little bit more towards photography um, for this summer, just cause like vlogging and especially vlogging for like two months straight, like that, Vlogging is so draining, trying to make videos and trying to construct a story. Like, like I find myself constantly thinking about what's the next step, like what's the next shot gonna be. Like, it's very mentally draining, whereas like photography is kind of like eases my mind a little bit. I can just go out there and shoot. I don't have to think too much. Like obviously shot composition and all this other stuff, but it doesn't, it doesn't require that constant like 24 seven, like, oh, how's this, how's this next shot gonna lead in this one? How am I connect this story? So it's kind of nice to take a little bit of a hiatus from video for a little while. But basically, uh, I'm gonna walk through some of my favorite pictures that I took in Africa over the summer uh, throughout Tanzania and Kenya and kind of tell you guys the stories behind the shot and the lessons that I learned along the way. So we actually started our journey on the coast of Tanzania, the sweaty coast as they call it, in the biggest city in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. Um, and there we spent a couple days kind of getting adjusted and then we headed to the University of Dar es Salaam where we spent a week studying um, at the University of Dar es Salaam, listening from lectures from their professors and then we all were actually staying with faculty uh, in a homestay. So I was actually staying with a Swahili professor at the University of Dar es Salaam and his family. Um, so not only were we going to class every day and learning Swahili and learning about Tanzania and their history and the culture and everything, but we're also, I'd go back to a Tanzanian family and got to practice my Swahili. And especially it was even great because it was a Swahili professor. 
basically there wasn't too too many photo opportunities there but we did take a day trip to what actually used to be the main port city in Tanzania Bagamoyo uh, and Bagamoyo was absolutely beautiful I'll throw up the pictures now um, we visited the Keole ruins which are these really really cool ruins that dated back hundreds of years and then it's also just a really cool coast town um, so there's a lot of opportunities to just uh, like there's there's the old forts that the Germans used uh, during World War One, and then we also like got to walk along the beach and see all the dows and the fishing boats and everything. So that was pretty cool. After University of Dar es Salaam, we we moved inland down into the bush. We actually moved deep down into the Ngerengere River Valley, where we stayed at like a little camp and lived in huts. And uh, there wasn't too much out there, but I kind of thought I would one night just walk around the camp and see what I could make. Out of, out of just this random camp and see what shots I could take and see what angles I could take. Um, and I actually was very successful and some of my favorite shots from the trip came out of Ngerengere where I, there are these really cool huts and there are these cactuses everywhere and I tried to be a little creative with the ways that I was taking these shots and there, uh, there's like one with like a motorcycle like in a shed and I thought that looked pretty cool. Um, so that was kind of just me a little experimenting with some landscapes. Later in the trip, we headed even farther north to Kondoa, which is a home to some very ancient cave paintings, but also home to a really cool dry river valley, which we hiked through one evening and got some really cool sunset shots uh, of that river valley. It was also cool because like the sand held all the, the water in since it was like a dry river valley. These sands kind of like served as reservoirs. So all the water would kind of come to the top and the, the sunlight and would reflect off that, which created some pretty cool visuals. And also it had like a beautiful valley with the acacia trees and everything. We had headed to the big island of Zanzibar in the Zanzibar archipelago off the coast of Tanzania where we stayed on the eastern side of the island for a couple days and that was incredible because not only was it just beautiful when the tide went out every day and you'd see all the tide pools with all the animals and everything but we also got the opportunity to go on a sunset dow ride where we all loaded up onto this dow sailboat and kind of sailed out watched the sunset we swam for a little bit and then we sailed back Got some really incredible shots of the sunset, especially with all the other fishing boats going by. We moved from the eastern side of Zanzibar to the western side, to the capital city, which is Zanzibar City, but most people just call it Stone Town, which is a very ancient city and kind of like a great spot of cultural exchange over the past thousand years, whether it be the Persians, the Portuguese, the, the Omani Sultanates, or even like it was a British protectorate for a while. So there's a great lot of different cultures combining in one spot. And the streets there were just incredible. The streets with all the market vendors. Um, Zanzibar is actually also 98% Muslim. So having that cultural influence there as well was super cool. I remember there's this one, I don't know if I got a picture of it, but there's literally a, like a, there's one Catholic church on the island. And then within like 50 feet of the Catholic church, you could see the spire of a, of a Muslim mosque. And that's just something that I've never really seen in America. And it was cool to see that cultural exchange just all the ways the different cultures blended and, and worked together all on this one island. After Stone Town, we headed to a private island, which is actually one of the, it was the first marine protected area in Tanzania. So it was called Chumbe Coral Park. So they had a beautiful coral reef that lined the island. And then there's this, this island where you could go and do ecotourism. So they only had like, I think eight or so bungalows on the island. So you could only have 16 people on the island at once. Um, and all the money that you paid to stay in these bungalows went back into the island and a lot of the, the resource and everything that were flowing through the Chumbe were kind of in a closed loop. So there wasn't, so it was very sustainable. Um, everything was solar powered, like all the rain, like everything we showered with was filtered rainwater that was filtered by the roof of the bungalows. They also had a cool lighthouse, which we got a lot of snazzy pictures on. After Zanzibar, we actually took a flight all the way up to northwestern Tanzania, uh, where we stayed on the edge of Lake Victoria and Speak Bay for a couple days, which was very convenient because we took our finals for the per first part of the trip and then we were able to go to a safari in the Serengeti like the very next day because we were so close. And the Serengeti is just absolutely beautiful. Um, from seeing like a literally a wild cheetah in the middle of a hunt chasing a gazelle and almost, almost taking it down to seeing a tree full of lions uh, some of the shots I caught there were just inc absolutely incredible and that was a, like Safari in the Serengeti is like a bucket list thing for me and finally being able to knock it off was was great. After the Serengeti we headed into Kenya for three weeks. We're staying in a lot of rural areas, um, homestays and stuff so I didn't have a lot of time to do photography. But we did hit a couple cool spots one of which was Hell's Gate National Park which we actually rode our bikes through. Hell's Gate National Park is the, actually the the park that the Lion King was based on and they have a little 
a little pride rock um, that kind of looks similar to how it did in the movie and they also have like just some really cool animals and a lot a lot of cool gorges and stuff that are happening because of the East Africa Rift system. So we kind of went down into one of those gorges, saw some hot springs and got some cool shots of the gorges and like the surrounding terrain. Um, later in our time in Kenya, we were staying right off the southern border of Nairobi National Park and got the chance to go to a, uh, a baby elephant orphanage, which was incredible. Some, some beautiful pictures that I took there. Um, and then also got to go to a draft center later that day to get up and personal with some of the drafts uh, because we only saw them from kind of afar while we were in the Serengeti. So those are most of my favorite shots that I took in Tanzania and Kenya. I really, really like, like I said, tried to take as many pictures as possible and kind of really develop my craft. So let me know what you thought down below of these pictures. Um, I'd really love any feedback for those of you that are more experienced photographers. Also, I hope you guys enjoyed a little backstory about my Africa trip. I do plan on posting more videos about that soon, but I kind of gave you guys a little outline of what all happened on the trip. So that's about it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed this, if you liked my storytelling, if you liked the pictures, drop a like down below. It helps me and supports the channel a lot more than you think. Like I said, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Let me know of any other uh, video ideas along this vein, whether it's photography, whether it's video, whether it's Africa related, or just like any general other video ideas you want from me. Uh, feel free to drop those down in the comments below. And if you're new, if this is the first video you've seen, welcome, uh, smack that subscribe button. We have a lot of cool stuff on this channel, whether it's magic, whether it's college life, whether it's video stuff, um, it's all here, so stick around. And with that, I think that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.